given what he did prior to the losing streak. I mean, everyone, it feels like in the MMA community is pulling for Tony. And this is a weird one because Benil is such a lovable guy. He's on a great streak as well. No one has a bad thing to say about Benil Darius. But I do feel like a lot of people, Chael, sort of feel like Tony got the raw end of a deal here. You know, he's supposed to fight for the belt, the Habib stuff, tripping over the wire. We know the whole story by now. Now he's on this losing streak and it feels like he's maybe staring at the tail end of his career. And, and it sucks that he never got that official title fight that he never got to be crowned undisputed king. And so, Chael, one thing that really intrigues me about this fight is the fact that historically, when someone makes a drastic change in their training, in their preparation leading up to a fight at this stage mm -hmm. of their career, it usually signals that they're desperate, that they're trying to do something drastic to change things, to, to, to put a new coat of paint on their career, but in the end, it's just a Band-Aid and it's not gonna fix much. But the biggest issue for Tony throughout his career has been the fact that he's been a little too reckless, that he gets hit too much. And what has he done leading up to this fight? He went to wild card. He went to train with Freddie Roach and the great coaches there. And if this can transform Tony Ferguson in the last few months into a fighter who's a little more reserved, who's a little more cautious, who takes less damage, who moves his head, Chill, I'm very interested to see what kind of Tony Ferguson shows up on Saturday. I agree with that. And not to mention, it's a three-round fight. Now, that's not good news for Tony. I think that's one of the bad things because, to your point, not only does Tony get hit a lot, they say that he's a slow starter. I don't know that I fully agree with that. I feel that he keeps a good pace and goes a little harder than his opponent can go at the end. But we don't need to split hairs on that. What I'd like to bring to you is the fact, look at what Tony's doing. Tony's going out and he's giving an opportunity to somebody else. Charles Oliveira has been a very good fighter for a long time. He was not a main event or a title consideration until Tony gave him an opportunity. I say that because Tony's doing the same thing here with Darush. We can't get a single 70 pounder to fight one another. And we also can't get the stars at 155 to give an opportunity to the guys a little bit lower. Dana White sat down with Brett Okamoto as recently as 48 hours ago and he talked about that. And he said that if Tony gets a win over Darush, it will skyrocket him right back uh, to the top echelons of the division. I like that a lot. And I like it because if anybody else came in and beat Darush right now, it would not skyrock them. The mere fact that Tony's taking the risk, that he's showing the opportunity, that he's being a, uh, a competitor, I do think he should be able to get something. And even if Dana White has to pencil it in, it's fair and I like it. Yeah, no, 100%. And, and let's be honest. I mean, a win over Benil Darush at this juncture given what Dariush has done as of late, six straight wins, really impressive performances, finishes, especially coming from a guy who we thought was just a grappler at the beginning of his UFC career, would be a great signal to everyone that Tony Ferguson is still here, that Tony Ferguson is still a factor at 155. And Chael, leading up to that Charles Oliveira fight, I said that that fight was a crossroads fight for Tony Ferguson. And unfortunately for him, he lost that fight. And now he's made these changes. Would it be fair or unfair, in your opinion, to call this a do or die fight? Not necessarily like, you know, he's gonna get cut. Not necessarily that he has to retire. But if he loses this fight, it's going to be very hard for Tony Ferguson to ever get back into the title picture. Would you agree with that? Very unrealistic that with uh, stubbing his toe here, Tony Ferguson, that he could return, that we could even lay out a map that could possibly even get him back to a championship. So yes, I do think that. Now, Tony's going to be meaningful. He's still going to be a main card guy. We're not in the conversations yet of, of getting cut. He's not even off of the main card. However, I do see your win. I don't know how bad Tony wants to stick around and be one of those guys. And I really like what you said about the time he's spending with Freddie Roach and at the wild card gym. You know, that he crossed paths with Ben Askren when Askren was out there getting ready for his boxing match. I spoke to Askren. Askren said, she said, look, guy works as hard as he ever does. And when you do talk about head movement, Ariel, that is one thing that Freddie Roach is going to make sure happens. And for whatever reason, Tony does know how to do this. I've seen him do it in sparring. I used to be a training partner with his. As of late, he's gotten so focused, and some of that has to do with the leg kicks. It's very hard to bob and weave and throw leg kicks. So sometimes guys choose an MMA. They go, okay, I'm gonna be a target, but then I can get those strikes in. I don't think it's a good trade. I see what you're seeing, and I share the same opinion with, as you. And I do think that when guys trade camps, it's not generally a good sign, but they don't usually have somebody as good as Freddie Roach. I'm very open to the idea, and I'm expecting, I am very hopeful that we see a little bit of a new Tony. Here's my concern, though, if I'm being honest. What's he been there for, like four months? Like, is that enough to truly change his, his poor habits? When that door closes at the Toyota Center in Houston on Saturday, will he just go back to the old Tony? Is there enough training that can be done in four months to drastically change a fighter? 
I, I, I don't know. And I lean towards I don't think so. What do you think? I will submit yes, but with a reason why. No, I don't think four months you're going to come up with new skills on a 36-year-old former champion. However, these aren't new skills. Freddie's got to remind him of old skills. Tony used to move and stalk you down. Now he just walks forward. He can go back to this. He just needs to be reminded. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.